Honorable members, let me emphasize that we are indeed very happy with the progress made in other priorities as well. For an example, in the health sector. The past trend of declining life expectancy has been reversed. And life expectancy is now firmly on an upward trend. I suggest that honorable members in the opposition may have missed information on this important national achievement, which has excited even the United Nations and research institutions. At the same time, the battle against the pandemic still continues and we dare not become complacent. Honorable Bula, you are correct. Order, order. <laughs> my apology, uh, <clears throat> Honorable Speaker, still stands of my flu. So if I keep on uh, <clears throat> attending to it, I will show you standard. I think I know. I'm dealing with a problem. <laughs> When we reaffirm the Constitution, let us also reaffirm the fundamental right to life. The right to life and the right to safety and security of women and children are paramount. While welcoming the significant decrease in overall serious crime, we once again strongly condemn the shocking, barbaric, and inhuman cases of rape and have taken place, that have taken place in our motherland. They need to be condemned fully by all of us. Some of these have gone beyond women and girls, as there have been reports of boys being molested as well. We have directed the police to show no mercy to perpetrators of these crimes. As outlined by Minister Hadebe in this debate, we will re-establish the Sexual Offences Courts to complement the work of the Sexual Offences Units in the South African Police Service. But there are aspects of this crime that go beyond the criminal justice system. Honorable Patlele stated correctly that legislation alone would not be sufficient to liberate women from the yoke of male domination and that we have to work on our attitudes in public and in private. The Honorable Moserha, the Chief Whip of the Majority Party, reminded us that as much as we develop interventions, programs, and campaigns to stem this tide, we can all agree that roots of this violence 
and the notion that life is cheap can be traced back to our dark and unjust past. Therefore, must look at what it is that we should be doing to prevent such horrendous crimes. How do we build stronger and more cohesive communities? We also need to look at how we can promote values that define human beings, such as respect for human life, respect for the next person and their property, and basic Ubuntu and other values that cement the, society, the, so, the social fabric of our society. I met with religious leaders last year who raised the need for a national discussion as they also felt something has seriously gone wrong in our society. As we head towards the 20th anniversary of our freedom, we need to look into this matter seriously as leaders. We must build on the work of the Social Cohesion Summit that took place in the Clip Town last year and begin the work of healing the nation as various sectors of society. We need stable communities to participate actively in the transformation of society. The Department of Basic Education is already looking at inclus inclu inculcating values of nationhood at a very early age, promoting rights and responsibilities amongst children. We acknowledge and applaud the good work of many civil society organizations that are raising awareness about violence against women and children and many other issues affecting society. In addition, we are happy that the National Assembly will host a debate on gender-based violence next week. As Madiba taught us, none of us working alone can achieve success. Working together, we will do so much more. <coughs> Honorable Killian reminded us to look broader into other aspects that affect the status of women. She raised concern about the traditional court's bill. Indeed, since its introduction, the bill has been criticized for being flawed for a number of reasons. Among these are the following. That it is unconstitutional in that it prohibits legal representation in traditional courts that it does not contain provisions to ensure that women form part of the courts, nor does it go far enough to ensure that women can participate actively in the deliberations of the courts, that it entrenches balkanization of traditional communities in accordance with the boundaries of the old tribal authorities of the defunct Bandu stands. That it restricts access to justice by denying the right of persons
to opt out of the traditional system and pursue redress of their matters in courts of law. All these concerns and more should be addressed during the parliamentary processes as the bill is currently before parliament. In other words, we have an opportunity, we have an opportunity to look at this bill again from parliament and therefore deal with the matters we believe are matters that need to be rectified in it. So we are going to have an opportunity. As government, we have heard the concerns loudly and clearly. And that's why we believe the opportunity should not be missed once it comes back to Parliament.